Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Yash. I hope you're having a great day. And I know it's been quite some time since I last uploaded a video. I know it's nothing new. I'm like the most unconsistent guy out there. But the last couple of months have been quite exciting. And for the major part, I moved out to a new city, uh, to a new place for study purposes. But I'm not going to talk about that and bore you guys. So let's just dive right into the topic of today's video. Now for today's video, I didn't plan out anything specific as I just wanted to create something quick and upload it to get the gears running. And while I was thinking what should I make, I thought why not product photography. It's one of my favorite genres of photography and it can be quite diverse by how you do it. You can easily do product photography in under 5 minutes by just placing a product in front of your camera and clicking its picture. There you have a product photo or you can script everything out, create a scene, add props, do the whole stuff and that for just a single frame and that can easily take a couple of days. In the end, it just boils down to how much information you want to show in just a single frame and that can be quite an intriguing task to do. Now for today's video, I'm not gonna create a scene and add props and stuff. I just want to keep things nice and simple so that anyone can follow along using just uh, their camera and a single light source. And anything else that I'm going to be using would be things that you can probably find in your home or if not, will be on the cheaper side to get. So the first thing that you'll definitely need to do product photography is to have a nice neutral colored background. And for that, I'm just using a piece of white chart paper as it is very easy to get. It's super cheap and it works just nice as a neutral colored background. Now with that said, let's do some product photography. Okay, so here's the setup that I'm working with. It's pretty simple with just a single light source for the entire scene. And there's the chart paper that I'm using as the background. I just taped it on a piece of foam to give it a bit more stability. Now for the products, I'm going to be covering three in this video. The first one is this Indian tonic water from Schweppes. I thought it looked pretty clean with that nice mustardy yellow color. The next one is just my old hair trimmer. This one's from Xiaomi. And again, it, I thought it looked pretty clean and minimalist. So I thought, why not? Now for the third one, I'm a bit confused between this uh, tube of face wash and this small tub of moisturizer. I think I'm leaning more towards the moisturizer because it has a nicer color palette. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna use this moisturizer as my third product. So again, here's the scene. There's the product on the background. And here's my mounting system. Okay, so while I was photographing the moisturizer tube, I noticed that the opposite side of it was getting a bit too dark. Since I'm using just a single light source to light up everything, there wasn't much going around to lift up those shadows and that did not look right. So I thought I should just use my small light to add a bit more fill and lift up and lift those shadows up. But then I remembered that I had to do everything with just a single light source. So what I ended up doing is I just took my notebook and I propped it up like this with a bit of support and that did the job pretty good actually. It lifted up those shadows nice and evenly without creating any sort of hot spots or color cast. So if you're ever in a situation like this where your shadows are going a bit too dark and you don't have any extra light to lift those up, you can use any sort of paper or anything like that to brighten it up. Just bring it a bit closer to your subject and that should do the work just fine.
Now after clicking the photos, all that's left to do is to bring them in the editing software to finish them up. Now, when it comes to editing, I didn't do much besides masking out the product to change the background. And if you guys want to know how I created this type of seamless background, I actually followed a tutorial by Piximperfect, if I'm not wrong. I'll link it up in the description so you guys can check it out and know in much more detail how to create these types of seamless background for your product photos. And one thing I'll add is that if you can, try to get the proper backdrop for your scene right in camera rather than delaying it on for post because that will give you the best looking results and make the whole workflow a lot more easier to do. For example, when I was creating the background for these photos, I noticed that it was a bit difficult for me to figure out how a colored background would look naturally in this type of scenario under this lighting condition and with a product place like that. Since I was just using a white piece of chart paper, it didn't get, it didn't give me much of an idea of how the color would react according to it. So what I ended up doing is to find more references and Google more product photos to see of how a colored background would look in this type of situation. And that made the process of creating a seamless background a bit more difficult, I guess. So I'll say that again, if you can get the perfect backdrop according to your scene in camera rather than relying on post, because that will look the best and it will make the process a whole lot more easier to do. Now, besides masking the product, I also cleaned it up a bit. And what I mean by that is I used the spot healing brush tool in Photoshop and removed any sort of scratches or nicks or clean any dust that I could see to make the product look more clean and fresh. And besides that, I also tweaked around with the exposure value of some photos, you know, adding more contrast and adding more saturation, just making the product pop out a bit more. And yeah, that was it. As I said, I didn't do much when it comes to editing as the lighting from the start was pretty good. So it didn't need that much attention. In the end, I think the photos turned out pretty good. They could have turned out a bit better if I had used more lights, added some props, uh, you know, just give more time to each photo and scene in general. But since the topic of today's video was to do quick and simple product photography, in that regard, I think the photos turned out pretty good. Let me know what you guys think about it. And yeah, that's it for today's video, I guess. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next one.